Hey you guys, thanks for watching. This is Mr. Sal. I'm going to go through this problem. We're going to solve the equation for k. And uh, notice this one has some fractions which may cause a little bit of confusion. That's okay uh, because we can still do this problem. So, uh, But before we do, what we want to know is the denominators of each of these terms. This first term has a denominator of 8. The second term here is a denominator of 5. But this negative 3, it does have a denominator, and that would be that it's a 1 there. So it's negative 3 divided by 1. Notice we didn't change that value at all. And this final term has a denominator 5. Well, we don't like fractions too much, so, or very few people like them anyways. So the point of all this is to get the denominators to be all the same, or common denominators, we need them to be equivalent, however you want to say it. And what denominator can we use so that these are all the same? Now we're going to have to multiply each of these by something to get them to be the same. So we're looking at a multiple of 5 and 8. Well, I would imagine that we would just want to use 40. If you used 80, you'd be fine, or even uh, 120, or... 160. Any of those would work, but 40 is the least one, but it doesn't matter if it's the least. Uh, it just happens to be the most convenient in this case, and it's pretty easy to find. So, to start off, we're going to multiply the 8 by 5, but in a fraction, in order not to change its value, if I do it to the denominator, I've got to do it to the numerator as well. What this is doing, really, is multiplying the entire fraction by 1, but we're splitting 1 up into 5 divided by 5. So what does that give us? 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 8 is 40. And we still have the k. This will be minus, let's do this next term, 5 times 8 would give us the 40. So we'll multiply the 8 by 8 as well. And we get 64 fortieths. Now this equals, so the 1, we need to multiply that by 40 to make it 40, but we'll have to multiply this 3 by 40 as well. So that gives us a negative 120 divided by 40. You can check that in your calculator there. We'll add this to 5 times 8. We've already done 5, so we know to multiply by 8 here on the 3 and 5. And that gives us 24 fortieths k. So we have this brand new equation, uh, but what's nice about this is that all of the denominators are 40. What this allows us to do is to get rid of the denominators altogether. So I'm going to rewrite this equation just without any denominators. And there we go. This is a lot easier to solve, and the reason we can do that is because since we're comparing all equal types of parts, if we were looking at a pie, for example, we would be comparing all the same parts, and so we don't really need to worry about the parts, but just the number of pieces now. That doesn't have to make complete sense. Just understand that that is kind of an explanation for how this is working here. Now what we can do is we can play the switch and stay game or just use principles of equality. In class, everyone preferred principles of equality, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, before we do that, I'm just going to choose to put the k's on the left and the numbers on the right. That's arbitrary. It's very random. There's no other reason than that's just where I want them. Okay? Now, let's go through this. We have a 25k on the left side of the equal sign. That's fine. That, that's where it's supposed to be. But we've got this negative 64, which is on the k side of the equal sign. So, I've got to do the inverse operation of this subtraction, which is addition. And I will add 64. What this does is it makes this term a 0. And so it's like 25k plus 0, which we don't really have to write in there. Now if I do it to one side, I've got to do it to the other side as well. So I'll add 64 to that negative 120. Notice I'm not adding the 64 to the 24k because they are unlike terms. And this is what I have now. 25k equals negative 56 plus 24k. So on the right side of the equal sign, because on the left we've got just k's, 
We've got this number, which is where it's supposed to be, but I also have this plus 24k. That is not where it should be. It's on the wrong side of the equal sign. So I'm going to have to subtract that 24k from itself, which will eliminate it. But if I do it to one side, I've also got to do it to the other side as well. This brings down our negative 56. And we still have some k's, but how many do we have? 25 minus 24 is 1. We don't have to show that 1, so we can just say from here that k equals negative 56. All right, for this problem, I went ahead and did all the work for the checking. Notice I have got my original equation, and I've replaced the x's with uh, the k's rather with the values of k that we found is negative 56. Uh, I multiplied the fraction by the k's and got these new fractions, and then we just needed common denominators in order to add or subtract the fractions. Once I got those values added and subtracted. I just needed to simplify this one fraction, which it did simplify down to the same thing on the right. This gives us a true statement, and so we know for sure now that k is correct.